which three pre-workout ingredients that are totally useless and which ones are actually worth your money. This is Nick at barbend.com. Today I'm speaking with very smart researcher, Dr. Mike T. Nelson. We're exploring the main questions that you guys keep on asking us about pre-workouts. Are they worth your money? So we're gonna go through the four most effective ingredients. I'm gonna tell you now, one of them's caffeine. Big surprise, I know. We're gonna talk about three that really aren't that useful for most athletes. We're gonna explore any potential side effects, some of which can be actually pretty surprising. I've actually written a full article on this. If you wanna just Google it, just Google Bar Bend, are pre-workouts worth it? That'll come right up. But for now, let's get into the ingredients that have the most research supporting them. And again, I think the first one won't be a big surprise. Guys, caffeine is really good for working out. It is the most widespread stimulant in the entire world. It works by blocking adenosine receptors. It's like a chemical that makes you tired, so it sort of makes you less sleepy than more awake, if you know what I mean. But according to science, there are many, many studies that have found it to have a really marked effect on workout performance. It doesn't just make you feel a bit more energized. Really marked effects on power output, on endurance, on perceived exertion, fat loss as well. There was even a paper published in Life Sciences that suggests it can help with age-related muscle loss, sarcopenia. So it's like, could be quite good for your body composition as well. There's a ton going on here. According to the USDA, one little eight fluid ounce cup of coffee has 95 milligrams of it. Uh, if you wanna get the same amount from Starbucks, that's 155 milligrams of caffeine. And plenty of pre-workouts, like this one here from Legion, have 350 milligrams of caffeine in one dose. So you can get really, really jazzed up from pre-workout. The rumors are indeed true. And one thing with caffeine is that you can really get less sensitive to it as time goes on and the more often you take it. So this is what Dr. Nelson suggests. Usually what I do is I'll have them actually cycle off most pre-workouts, if at all possible. And then only on like their heaviest day or when needed, I'll have them use them. Uh, I usually find most people probably tend to rely on them a little bit too much. Um, like a client I had recently, he would take it like every day. He was lifting five days a week and he had been doing that for the last, I think, seven months. So not necessarily, I would say, bad per se. Um, but, you know, if you're getting five, six hours of sleep on top of it, I think that's probably uh, an additional stressor we can probably back down and see what's going on and then, you know, add back in later. So you hear a lot of studies and signs about all the other unusual chemically sounding ingredients in pre-workouts, but make absolutely no mistake, caffeine is the most useful ingredient in a pre-workout. And because they're so high in caffeine, or many of them are anyway, it really is quite easy to become desensitized to its effects. So it's a really good idea to cycle your pre-workouts and maybe have some before your toughest workout of the week, as opposed to right before any time you touch a weight. Right, and everyone's experienced this, right? So if you have like your first cup of coffee in, you know, like months, you're like, ooh, this is great. And you have two, three cups of coffee every day, you're like, eh, I don't really notice too much of an effect from it. A lot of people tend to replace uh, sleep with caffeine. And part of it is I kind of want them to realize how tired they are. <laughs> it sounds like I'm a big meanie, but you know, they're like, oh, I can sleep on five or six hours. It's great. I'm like, well, how much caffeine do you have during the day? It's like, oh, only like, you know, three or four cups of coffee. It's like, okay, if we remove that, you're probably not gonna feel so good. And then you'll probably realize you need a little bit more sleep. So that actually wraps up all the stimulants that I wanted to talk about. Because even though pre-workouts are known for being big stimulants and the word stimulant gets thrown around a lot, there are actually very few legal stimulants out there that you can put in products like this. Sometimes you'll get your himbean, which is kind of like a stimulant made from the bark of a tree. But generally speaking, caffeine is the only real stimulant you're gonna get. So let's talk about these other still pretty effective but not technically stimulatory ingredients you can get in pre-workouts. So when it comes to the most research-backed ingredients in pre-workouts, the list is actually pretty short. There are only three more ingredients that I want to mention. The first is definitely beta-alanine, which has a pretty strong link with endurance, but also muscular endurance, like sets in the 10 to 15 rep range. It also might help you to produce carnosine, which means it may even exert some anti-aging properties. Beta-alanine has some pretty good data. Like if you look at a meta-analysis that uh, Roger Harris was one of the authors on, um, in that study, about a 2.85% benefit in performance, which if you're an elite athlete, getting almost a 3% benefit in performance is pretty darn good. Um, further studies show that that was probably, if you're doing exercise, it lasts about 60 seconds to 240 seconds. So kind of that one to two, three minute range. 
Now, when it comes to beta alanine, you want to make sure you get about 1.6 grams of it at least per serving. And a lot of studies have shown more effects at like three or four grams, but I do need to point out that it does produce a bit of a tingly sensation on the skin called paresthesia. It's harmless, some people like it, some people really don't like it. So it's really worth remembering when you're purchasing your pre-workout. Probably the most popular sports supplement on earth, besides just like whey protein, is creatine. It has a really strong link with increased power output. Like some studies put it at between 12 and 20%. It's a really significant amount we're talking about here. Like beta alanine, you probably don't actually need to take it before a workout. It appears the body just likes to have stores of it to use when you are working out. So you can probably just take it whenever, although it is worth remembering that there's some evidence that it absorbs a little bit better when taken around a workout. So that's worth remembering. Creatine helps also with more single rep performance, like reps in the one to three rep range. So for example, if you look at creatine, uh, five grams a day for about four weeks, uh, you will completely kind of saturate the muscle. So you won't really see a huge effect by taking more. So I explain it to clients, like if I have uh, one cup of water and it's already full with water, I can try to dump more water in, but nothing's gonna happen, All right? So once the muscle is full of creatine, yeah, you can add a little bit more each day to kind of keep it topped off, but adding 10, 20 more grams a day isn't going to be able to stuff more in the muscle. Now, once you've talked about caffeine and creatine and beta alanine, you sort of start to run out of really well-researched pre-workout ingredients. And you start to find more ingredients that have one or two interesting studies behind them, but don't really have a lot to get super, super excited about. I do want to mention one more though. Citrulline has some pretty interesting research behind it. It appears to improve blood flow, which might help to improve endurance and power output. And this is because it's a precursor for nitric oxide. And if you spend much time reading about pre-workouts, You'll see the letters NO appear a lot. Increasing nitric oxide is really important to a lot of people for, again, improving blood flow, endurance, and getting a nice pump in the muscles as well. There was a study published in 2016 in the Journal of the International Society of Sports Nutrition that found that citrulline can improve power output and also increase time to fatigue among cyclists. And that same year, a study was published that found it improved peak power and explosive power among tennis players. l citrulline malate you know, probably looking at a dose of at least six to eight grams, maybe higher. Uh, one of the new studies that came out on it was not super positive. Some of the early stuff showed that it may enhance the amount of volume that you can do, but the benefits you saw with that were at a pretty high dose and tend to came very late into the number of sets that people were doing. So yeah, if you look at the research, is there a benefit statistically? Yeah, you can find some data to show that. In my opinion, is it going to make a massive difference for most people? Eh, probably not, but yeah, I would say that one's I'm still kind of split on because uh, the studies I don't think have really clearly identified where the best kind of range for the benefit is. So when someone says, are pre-workouts worth it? My answer is there are a few ingredients that do seem to be pretty useful there are also plenty that don't seem to be that useful at all. So I wanted to leave you guys with a few ingredients that you can probably forget about in a pre-workout. The first is glutamine, which is in like a ton of supplements out there. It's the most common amino acid in the body, so you probably don't actually need that much more of it. People like to say it's a really good way to help you build muscle, but the evidence for that is mostly limited to like burn victims or people who have suffered stab wounds, have stomach ulcers, people whose bodies really need to generate more tissue. There's some evidence that can help with that, but for the average person, most of your glutamine gets stored in the gut, and there's not really any evidence that taking extra glutamine is gonna result in more muscle growth. Another super common pre-workout ingredient that just is not all that great as a pre-workout ingredient is arginine. It's in this pre-workout, it's in that pre-workout, it's in a ton of them. The idea is that it helps to increase your nitric oxide production, kind of like citrulline. So first of all, if you have citrulline and arginine in the same pre-workout, they're gonna be fighting for the same effect and not cancel each other out, but it's just not an effective way to have your ingredients dosed. But also the effect is just much less reliable with arginine than it is with citrulline. So it's not like there's no data to suggest that arginine can help with NO. It's just a lot less consistent than citrulline, so I would just take some citrulline. Finally, I wanna mention CLA, or conjugated linoleic acid. This is an ingredient that got a lot of hype for a while there because there are some interesting studies showing it can help with fat loss. The thing is the effect is not very, very reliable. There are plenty of studies that have found it to have no effect. And the ones that have found an effect, the doses are normally like three to six grams, which is a lot more than you get in a pre-workout. This one here, for instance, has just 500 milligrams of it. So I wouldn't get too excited about CLA in your pre-workouts either. 
Now in the world of pre-workouts, there are of course plenty of kind of questionable ingredients out there. I think those three are the most common, the most important to think about. I also wouldn't mention like ephedrine or DMAA or amphetamines. These are also ingredients with a history of being used in pre-workouts, but they're very legally questionable. You don't really see them in pre-workouts anymore anyway. There's one other thing I wanted to mention about these, and that is that it's possible there's some evidence, not a ton of it, but there is evidence to suggest that when you only or mostly work out with a pre-workout in your system, the body gets used to performing under those conditions. And that can have real implications for competitive athletes who want to perform their best when they're on the stage. There's a Russian study that Dr. Nelson talks about a lot. What they found was if you use some type of stimulant to study, you did better taking the test using the same stimulant. Uh, if you didn't, you did better taking the test not using it which kind of makes sense of how the brain kind of learns, right? The brain's going to learn at whatever state you sort of put it in. So if you have someone who's really trying to work on their deadlift, they're using a higher amount of caffeine on those training days, testing under that kind of similar condition is probably going to be beneficial too. The moral of the story is that for athletes, you want to usually train the same way you would compete. That goes for like foods. You want to eat not that differently to how you normally eat on competition day. It also means something for pre-workouts. You don't want to always train with a ton of pre-workout in your system. Now this really depends on how serious an athlete you are or whether you are an athlete at all. Nonetheless, when you make getting super hyped up a daily event, then you get much less hyped up when you take it and that can have implications for your performance on the stage. All right, so that is my answer to the question of are pre-workouts worth it? I think they are if you're making sure you're getting effective dosages and you're avoiding kind of useless ingredients then I think they can be a useful addition to an athlete's tool set. Now, most of the differences are relatively minor, like an extra rep or 3% of your sprint time. That's very meaningful to an athlete. For the average person, the most effective ingredient is definitely caffeine. So, you know, if all these chemicals make you a little bit wary, a big cup of coffee is probably gonna be the job. Now, there are a few other ingredients though that I didn't really get into here. So if you wanna learn more about pre-workouts and find out what the best pre-workouts on the market are, in my opinion, just give that a Google to Barben Best Pre-Workouts.